Welcome to our CyberSafe Digest weekly podcast, episode 29. Each week, we will unfold the most recent cyber attacks and will provide you with valuable insights on how to shield your business from these threats, along with practical steps and tips to enhance your cybersecurity. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 29 of our CyberSafe Digest podcast. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, I'm Martin Roberts, Managing Director of New Ways, and I'm here with my colleague, Toby Stevenson, Chief Technology Officer at New Ways. Well, Toby, I I understand you've been you've been abroad. Um, I have. I've been I've been on my travels. Yes. Okay. So where to this time? So I've been to the WatchGuard Partner Conference, and that was held in Amsterdam last week. So That's yeah, awesome. so, some some good some good learning stuff there. I mean. Go being in Amsterdam sounds very exotic. I mean, honestly, you, you're inside in a dark room all day, looking at at slides and pe- listening to people speaking. It could it could be anywhere. Well, <laughs> but, absolutely. Um, I, I, oh, people used to always say to me how glamorous my job seemed when I was uh, doing ERP implementations around the world, and generally, I got to see the inside of factories in faraway places, which looked like factories almost anywhere. Yeah, anyway, exactly. So I think the one qualification here is to say that obviously WatchGuard is a producer of, of product and they, they invite partners there and other people to talk about their new products, their new offerings and such like. But I mean, a very well-respected partner, which is something we've worked with for a long, long time. We have, yeah, must be. Well, I think ever since the, the company was 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 Absolutely. conceived, it's been it's been working with WatchGuard, and certainly yes. myself, I I worked with WatchGuard in in a, in a previous life as well. Yes. So uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of time and respect for WatchGuard, and and you know, and they are well regarded within the the industry. They are they have a uh, they've historically had a, a primary focus around small to medium sized businesses. Uh, so they've made their technology capable but accessible so it doesn't carry the the huge price tag that the enterprise security vendors have and i say historically targeting um, small to medium-sized businesses they at this event or actually slightly prior to the event they've announced that um, they are making forays into um, large campus networks with universities right. and and councils so they are ex- Expanding their their reach and their remit and, and their capabilities, and they've recently announced that they are sponsoring a an ice hockey team in the NHL in the US. So WatchGuard were founded in Seattle, so they they are sponsoring the Seattle Kraken, which is their local ice hockey team. They've got all the stadium branded out apparently, and they're, they've been doing like a joint marketing activity. But but really really interesting is that they approached the the local team with a view to sponsoring and offered them trials of all the all the their solutions with no obligation for them to buy and as the story is told within uh, a month or so they they ripped everything out they got and put all watch guard stuff in so i'm sure there's perhaps a little bit more detail to it and that's perhaps a little more nuanced but actually it's kind of a nice story yeah it is that's it and let's say watch guard have always been very good to work with um a, a, a great player and offering really good value solutions so yeah good Right then, so Apogee, which is their the name for their event. Yes. Do we do we know why Apogee? So, so in reference to the to arriving at the summit, arriving at the top of something. Ah. So it's kind of that kind of iconography. Okay. You know, you, you, the top partners you know, with going to the to the event and and okay um, and, and talking about all the things that's going to help help you succeed and and all that kind of good stuff. Okay, let's just hope it's not the, uh, the as high as it gets. Anyway, right then, so. There must have been new technology launches or, or, or new things happening they need to talk to, to you about. What's the the one thing you came away with where you went, wow, I'm pleased they're doing that, or that's a really good thing to add to the portfolio? Yeah, and, and I'd say the probably isn't isn't just one thing. I think the thing that was that was really telling was watch card operating in different product areas. Sure. And what they're building out in their their cloud platform and through a, a series of different what we might term service fabrics is a way of of pulling all of these different products together, not only for management but also for alerting and incident surfing. So surfacing. So I think that's a really really great differentiator. So they've got this, they've got this, this they're building out this great cloud um, management portal and yep. and platform, and that allows 
uh, things like automation to happen in in a much more scalable way in a much more accessible way um and and the the, the different products that they've got are, are feeding into this central let's call it a central threat feed or a central um uh, event feed and they're then able to run their analytics over all of this data that comes in and perform things like correlation and 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 analysis to actually determine if a number of seemingly benign events from yep. different products when stitched together seem as though they are perhaps something more malignant and something more more dangerous and and and, and malicious so that's that's a really uh, a really cool thing and they're they're, they're building out all the time so they've they've made a a few different acquisitions over the course of the last year which again are starting to bear fruit and we'll we'll talk about some of those in a a bit more detail but i think probably two of the two of the coolest things that they've got so they they made an acquisition last year of an organization called cyglass and this organization looks really deeply at network behavior and what this means is that that the before this technology came out, it meant that WatchGuard were really, really good at looking what was coming in and out of the network because they provide the firewall, and they were really good at looking at what was happening on the endpoint because they have an endpoint solution, but they couldn't really see what was going on around the network apart from where it touched these these elements, and that didn't always give the clearest of pictures. And this new acquisition actually allows them to pull all the data in from the rest of the network, throw it into this centralised um, data feed, which which they call threat sync, um, and then correlate all of that activity together to say, okay, well, we see these different things have all happened, um, and actually, individually, they may not seem like they're they're particularly dangerous. Um, so uh, every every um, uh, event that gets um, recorded is is scored from one sure. to ten, uh, and most of these things, you know, are, are informational. You know, this happened, you know, it's not a concern. This happened, it's not a concern. And so they get like a rating of one. And obviously something really bad that happened, so like a virus gets detected or you someone tries to go to a, a block website and it flags it up as, as a much higher number, maybe seven or eight, nine, maybe even 10. What the what this, this, this mass correlation allows is maybe these fours and fives, which don't normally put the head above the parapet, sure. maybe together they all actually form like an eight or a nine because they are all individually relatively insignificant and benign but actually together they are it's um, the aggregation yeah yeah that yeah, they, they are artifacts of, of, of something broader happening and because they've got this ability to see from all these different telemetry sources yeah. and they can do all of that um, and, and, and surface things that actually you wouldn't be able to see um this is all done in the cloud so you don't need like this huge box on premise to do it all so again it, it's 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 making it accessible to that smb organization sure. so so this technology has existed in enterprise for you know, you know four five six years yes um, hugely expensive hugely complicated and what WatchGuard are doing which is what they do really well is actually is distilling all this down to make it consumable for an sm both in terms of of, of, of management of and also acquisition of I think that that's the key thing. I mean, this this is all. It's great to go and see these things and and see the front end. I mean, obviously, a lot of the people we we work for, customers, our SMBs and SMEs, you know, don't need to know all of this in detail. But what they need to understand is the power that it brings them. That that we as a as a an MSP are able to offer these services which are would normally be only accessible to very large organizations with dedicated resource or very expensive uh, solutions so that's the, that's the beauty of this okay so yeah and, 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 and i suppose in in a in, in, a, in a very high level summary what this mm. allows us to do and, and we've touched on the importance of this is we can get eyes on more things we can see more things on the network we can see all these dark corners of the network that you know, perhaps you know that may be um, exploited by an attacker or a malicious insider or something like that so yeah some really cool stuff out of this this technology that, that's that's, that's coming um building out compliance reporting things like that and all you know in this in this cohesive uh multi multi-data feed technology so yeah really exciting okay so for those businesses that are um having to concentrate on cyber um, and having to 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 make themselves cyber safe because they're part of a particular supply chain, or they've got customers demanding you know, a higher level of security. 
you know, the, the, uh, the, this solution obviously quite appealing to, to them. Anything else that came along which which high, was highlighted that would make things easier for, for SMEs and SMBs? So, yeah, so the it's a technology, which, again, another one we've seen to slowly start disseminate down to SMBs from enterprise, but there's a, a, a collection of acronyms so don't use all our acronyms up because we've got acronyms no 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 don't up. worry i'm not i'm not using i'm not using them up. don't okay. worry so sassy okay. which is the secure access service edge uh, yeah. ztna which is a zero trust network access and casb which is a cloud access security broker and these are all things that allow you to control how people use the internet and make access into your network. And historically, that's kind of been quite difficult, particularly in the modern hybrid work era. So if people are sat in the office, you have a degree of control because you see that single ingress and egress yes. point, you see what's coming and going. But when people are working at home, um, there are not many organizations that will equip each of their home workers with the same technology that they use in the office. So the firewall and the web filtering and all that kind of stuff that's all network-based. There's very few organizations that will provide that to their staff as they work from home. And so what has been historically relied on in the SMB space is a hodgepodge of point solutions. Yeah. So we'll put a web filter on there. We'll rely on the the firewall capabilities of the, the home router. We'll have the Windows firewall on the PC. We'll obviously have endpoint security. We may do some DNS filtering. We may not. But it, it, it's 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 a, it's typically been a bunch of generally disconnected point solutions to achieve a comparable level of protection that you might get when you're in the office. Yeah. Um, and that's that, that's that's been a necessity because you want to provide that protection, but you've also got to kind of balance up what the cost of deploying yes. these solutions are. So, and that's always been a really tricky thing. And and what enterprise have done for uh, again, you know. You know, four, five, six years is uh, implemented um, very sophisticated and very expensive and very complicated cloud-based solutions that will funnel all of your traffic through a cloud service. So you're thus behind a company-controlled firewall for all of your web browsing. Um, you can apply access policies to that traffic. So you can then say, okay, well, you know, you've you've connected and you're you're browsing the internet through our, our corporate agreed setup. If you now need to access the network, you can also access the network through that same mechanism. So a, yes. a bit like a VPN, but again applying all those same security controls. Um, and we also want to be able to see all the kinds of places that you're going to and what data you're sending up and down. Um, and again, that was that was something that was possible in varying degrees with firewalls and, and things like that. But um, obviously, once you step away from that. You yeah. can't get that. And that's where the, this where this CASB comes in. This is effectively building up an entire inventory of all of your activity. And then the organization can then play um, uh, certain uh, rules and 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 uh, policies against those things. So, okay, yeah, well, you are, you're allowed to access um, you know, OneDrive when you're at home, but you're not allowed to access Dropbox or yeah. you're not allowed to access this other cloud service or, or whatever it is. Um, and you can build up data. So, okay, well, yeah, they're copying a lot of data out through OneDrive, you know, what's that all about? Or, you know, they're downloading a lot of data, what's that all about? And you can kind of like start to pick it all apart. It's kind of given this technology, this it's kind of like a, a bundle of capabilities and and the, the specific ways that it's, it's going to come to market, not yet wholly okay. clear. Um, it may be under this, it's under a different, multiple different products or, or different you know, a core product and, and, and add-ons, but they're terming this fire cloud. And okay. essentially what this is going to give you is, is give you a consistent internet presence internet, uh, and, and, and security presence um, irrespective of location. So a bit like, uh, I suppose an analogy might be like you're always, as soon as you turn your machine on, it VPNs back into the corporate network and pushes all the sure. traffic over that VPN. Everything is then treated as though you're in the office and it's the same kind of mentality. So it's helping to attest that um, endpoint security position. But again, being watch guard, this will all feed into their RetSync that runs in yes. their cloud platform can take in health attestation from the endpoint. So if you run their endpoint software, it can pull in all the information around that. So if you've got a malfunctioning endpoint security software from WatchGuard on your machine, let's say for some reason it's not working properly, yeah. you can perhaps configure it to say, well, don't allow them onto the network if we can't make sure they haven't got any viruses. Sure, and so 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 like that health attestation is there, which is, again it is a really powerful thing, and it's a really clever thing, and it's and it's it's something that's either been done cheaply and unreliably, 
or it's very expensive. And this is, I think this is going to kind of like sit in that middle ground somewhere that it's going to be a lot more reliable than the the cheaper solutions in doing this. It's not going to be hugely onerous on the end user, which obviously is a massive thing because as soon as you start putting barriers up for people to work, they start looking for workarounds and side systems they do, and indeed. stop using things altogether. But yes, yeah, so again, I think that's that's a really cool thing. And yeah, it's, it's going to be an evolution. So the way that they're kind of presented it, you know, we shouldn't expect all of this functionality on day one, but they're going to start off with with handling the web browsing piece first. So again, giving that consistent yes. web defense, shall we say, irrespective of location, and then they'll start to build out other capabilities. But yeah, some, some, some cool stuff in there. And that kind of ties into some of the changes they're making with client vpn so they're they're looking at moving their remote user vpn system to a new technology which is faster more secure and all that kind of good stuff so yeah that, that was a really cool thing okay so so i mean in summary it's the thing we've always we've, we've talked about before about you know hey we've got great security in the office when, when you're in the enterprise within the walls of the of the the, the office and the factory, whatever. But once you step outside, it's not so good. This begins to address that and, and address it in a a way which is not onerously expensive. Yeah, and, and, and address it in a way that is consistent with the rest of your security yeah. posture. Brilliant. Okay. So then let's talk about, I'm sure there's loads and loads and loads of stuff because you were there for a good few days, yeah? So let's talk about new threats that, you became aware of which you weren't aware of perhaps or knew in detail before that before your before the show before the the meeting yeah okay. sure so so yeah so th- th- there's a couple of ones and actually what was really interesting and i think we touched on it on, on the, um, uh, either the last podcast or the one before that but actually like a, a resurgence of old threats oh, yeah. it's like you know it's like um at the second time round or the third time round that, that we're seeing them and and actually they gave a couple of really cool demos around some of this stuff and um the first one actually was to illustrate just how trivial it is to to pull passwords from your web browser oh, wow. um okay. and actually it was it was such an effective demo that i think we're, i'm going to try and pull together a similar thing so we can kind of stick that on on the website to support Good idea. you know support some of the 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 uh, the learnings and the information that we're sharing um but essentially uh, the passwords that are stored in browsers um are encrypted with a key that is stored in a plain text file in the browser program folder so if the attacker can somehow get hold of that they can just <laughs> decrypt all of your passwords which you know is uh it's not the best yeah um, and um, I say yeah, there's, there's um, uh, uh, different methods of doing that. But you know, if you think that when you go to a website, your browser interacts with that site, you know, your browser is 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 downloading things all the time when it goes to a site, all the pictures and the content, they all get downloaded. If a piece of script can be downloaded and, and be executed and that script says, go and have a look at that file yes. and then grab the key and then you know, spit it into this other bit of code that you've downloaded, which will then go and expose all of the passwords and then send them out to me. In Thank you very way. much. I've got all your passwords. And it's um, a lovely old, as you say, so it's a lovely old retro thing to 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 see that resurgence again. Any any other things which were reprised from the past which have got better, or you're surprised to see again? Not so much surprise, but it was it was showing the they, they again they gave another demo which showed the relative ease in which a piece of known malware can be made to be an unknown piece of malware, so thus defeating signature based antivirus, oh, yeah. which we spoke about in a previous yeah. um, podcast. Um, and uh, essentially, there are uh, uh, very small utilities that you kind of say, okay, this is a known file. Um, so if we if we if we rewind back, um, every file has has a, a, a cryptographical hash, um, yes. which is unique to that that file. And if something in that file changes, then um, that hash value changes. And that's how antivirus works. Oh, this is a piece of malware. Uh, let's put its hash into our dictionary of, of bad things, and then every file that we scan, if we see it, will stop it from being executed. Sure. Um, and um, you, know, you can. Grab this software, and you can take a known a known executable. You can run it through this this utility, and it will still function exactly as it did before, but it has a completely different fingerprint, and thus antivirus 
won't stop it. And the demo they gave was showing how the different layers of protection on the firewall in this in this particular demo can help because they have a, a signature based antivirus, which is is what everything runs through first. And the idea behind that is it, it's kind of like gets out all the the low hanging fruit, you know, the stuff that is is just just lazy attempts at trying to get stuff in. They then have two other technologies. They have a technology called um, intelligent AV, which is a, a machine learning behavioral based um scanner and they also have a sandboxing technology so something called apt blocker where they uh can upload these files and 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 execute them in an environment to establish the true nature of these of these files and i think the kind of the point is with with some of these obfuscation techniques that they were demonstrating was that the signature based stuff just stands no chance at anyone that's even moderately attempting to do it so they they cited that um the ransomware group lockbit um every single campaign even though it was running exactly the same software uh, had a freshly um rolled version of yeah. the executable so it would never ever be seen by a regular antivirus scanner um it would need something more advanced to yeah. to look at the behavior or the activity or the way that it had been written that kind of thing because um, there are other markers within the file that can be checked by certain tools that will um give a a a a score to say you know whether this is this is a good file or a bad file and the the point of this was that it's relatively trivial actually most even semi-serious threat actors are doing this now so just relying on antivirus signature detection alone yeah um is is insufficient and it was a really great example of seeing you know just how trivial it was to 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 uh, re-roll a piece of malware okay i i guess actually we could fill uh several hours with with what you saw what you discovered oh yeah so, yeah 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 i mean you know there, there was there was you know two and a bit days of, of of nerds talking to nerds in a dark room with the occasional respite for coffee in, in the bathroom so yeah it was there, there was a lot of content Absolutely. Okay, well, good stuff. Thank you very much, Toby. I'm, I'm aware of people who have other things to do. And we'll, we'll, we'll cover some more next time, because next time you're actually somewhere else in the world. Yeah, I will be going to another cybersecurity conference for the next one. So, yes, I'll be in the US at the IT Nation Secure Security Conference. So again, that should be that should be good. There should be a lot of good in- information yeah. there. So um, it seems like this is the kind of the time of the year when there's a lot of security conferences and there's lots of information to take in and, and, and juggle and assimilate. But yeah, yeah, that, that's where I'll be. But I think I think what it demonstrates is actually there's everything's moving at pace. Um, there's vendors bringing out new stuff all the time. It's 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 our job to to work out which is the best solutions which are the best value for money and actually which fits into the the jigsaw which makes a good security posture for our customers um, okay um so we can't leave without having uh, an acronym um and uh, i think this week uh we've we've uh, probably one of the learnings from your your visit uh is ndr yes november talked, delta we, romeo okay we've talked about mdr yes but ndr so well uh, I, I'm going to take a guess on the DR. Um, yeah, um, but actually, no. You go ahead. Go, go. Give us the full. Give us the full Monty on this. One. Yeah. So network detection and response. And I managed to dance around it earlier when we were talking around sure. this, this 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 tooling that WatchGuard have uh, brought to market. Essentially, this is the ability to look at the network as a whole pulling the data from all the different network endpoints. So not just your PCs and servers, but also network switches and access points and firewalls and all this kind of stuff and build that holistic view of what data packets are passing around the network, looking at all of that information. So source and destination and maybe what's in the payload um, and uh, being able to identify um, malicious activity, malicious behaviors. So they, in this particular example, and it's not an uncommon approach, is there is a, a company baseline that is established. So you know, what does normal look like? Yes. Um, unless you're very unfortunate uh, to be having an attack when that baseline runs. What that does is it gives us this the ability to see where things are dramatically different and stick out like a sore thumb. So, you know, if normally uh, the traffic between um, uh, a, a group of PCs and the server is between nine to five, Monday to Friday, and all of a sudden we see something overnight, 
Yes. That might suggest that something unusual is, is amiss. And you know, we, we can then, uh, that, that can be surfaced and it can be investigated, you know, taking all this different telemetry, working out what's going on, what happened next. So you know, maybe there was a lot of traffic, but then what happened after that? And what does the firewall show? And what does the endpoint security software show? And that's kind of, yeah, that that real power. It's say it, it's looking in all the dark corners of the network, pulling in all this information. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's. I think it's a really exciting, really exciting thing. And and I think in this particular instance, it's been made relatively accessible to to SMB businesses. You know, historically, this would have been a hugely, hugely exp- expensive yes. technology. And and actually, yeah, you know, it's kind of what WatchGuard do. They 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 distill and disseminate this down into to the to the to make it available to to smaller businesses so yeah network detection and response it's i think we're going to hear a lot more about it over the over the coming months i think it makes it exciting for, for people like us because it, it it does allow us to offer more secure environments for our customers and to make things safer and you know our, our lives we've talked about this before our lives have changed in the last 10 15 years in that it used to be about providing making IT work for people. Now it's about making uh, the, the environment safe. So no, good, good, good thing to hear. Toby, thank you very much. Thank you very you. much, everyone, for listening. And I guess what you need to do is probably get a, a couple of hours sleep in here and there before next week's podcast, where you'll be getting up very early in the morning, I guess. Relatively speaking, yes, although I'll probably yes. still be on body clock uk time but yeah absolutely and, and, I, and i'll just i'll just loll out of bed at some point and we'll, we'll have a chat <laughs> sounds good okay thank you very much everybody see you next time thank you everyone we've reached the end of episode 29 of our cyber safe digest weekly podcast thank you very much for listening and to make sure you don't miss out on our future episodes hit that subscribe button on spotify apple or google podcast for more cybersecurity wisdom and resources head over to our website at cybersafe.co.uk see you next thursday